So yeah, right, we're here at Fully Charged Live with Chris Hazel of Zero EV. How are you doing, Chris? I'm good, thanks. Do you want to hold that? Do I want to hold that? Yeah, I've got one okay. here. Oh, you've got one. Where's mine? <laughs> so I thought you wanted to hold it. <laughs> what are these beautiful motors that we've got in front of us? So this is the new Zonic motor range that we've just released at Fully Charged. Um, it's the first time everyone's actually seen them. Maybe you might use one in your build. Potentially. If you ever make your mind up. Oh, cuts deep, man. <laughs> so we've got the Zonic 70. So this is a 72 kilowatt peak, uh, 14,000 RPM, 350 volt nominal motor, 175 newton meters of torque. So it packs a punch. Nice little motor, probably perfect for things like minis, Fiat 500, sort of smaller, sub 7,000 kilo car sort of thing. Um, Zonic 7, uh, 120, this, this one, beautiful. which is really nice yeah. with that built in inverter. You can touch it. Yeah. Oh. That's got the built in inverter on the back end yeah, of it, it as well. Really, really um, it's also got the Hyper 9 B face on the front, so it fits onto the original uh, adapter plates and stuff that people have already got. Right, okay. So this is a good sort of, I suppose, high voltage Hyper 9 replacement. So if you want to do CCS or DC fast charging, yep. it needs to be higher voltage. That's where sort of these sort of come in. And you've got the 180, which is a 360 newton meters of torque, sort of big boy. More, big boy, yeah. I mean, it's got a fairly big inverter with it at the moment. Yeah. Long term, we will go to a slightly smaller inverter, but currently you get full performance out of that. And that's really good. And then we've got the AEM VCU. Yep. Not the cheapest thing in the world for us, but the software is amazing. The support's really good. And you can run all the other bells and whistles they supply, like the PDUs and the displays. The displays and, and, and yeah. So you've got all the other options with that with, yeah, with that VCU, uh, which is really nice. One of the nice. displays has been used in uh, a build that you're helping with, isn't it? Yes, so we've got one in a build and they've actually just sponsored me for the Skyline. Oh, really? So they give me a full system for my Skyline. So the Skyline's going to be all swapped over to AEM soon. And we'll be running we'll be running that with a new wide body kit and all that sort of stuff. So that'll oh, really? be, be special. Oh. Are you going to um, let us have a go in that? Maybe, I'm going to ship out to the US later this year. you did see some drift, uh, drifting skills in my last video, right? Did I? I just had to send it to you then, obviously. You, <laughs> you send me videos every week. You are subscribed, right, Chris? <laughs> I uh, am subscribed, excellent. yeah. Excellent. So, you know, everybody wants to know a bit of cost action. So what are we talking price-wise? Um, they don't vary too much. The 180, we're at 7,950. Uh, this one, we're at about 7.5. And, and then we drop down, I think, to about 6-ish um, for the 70. Yeah. As we get into higher volume, the prices will come down. Um, and we are going to be releasing gearboxes for these. So we've got a transaxle gearbox for the small one. Yep. And we've got prop drive gearboxes for the other two. And what are the costs on those gearboxes? Uh, the gearbox is about 1,600 quid. That's really good. So they're not really too good. bad, really. Yeah. Um, and they're helical gearboxes, so they run really silent. And we're going to do two uh, two ratios. We'll do a 2 to 1 and a 1.75 to 1. Okay. Um, those gearboxes also fit with the Hyper 9 as well. So if people still want to run a Hyper 9, we're going to bring out gearboxes that, that cross over because yeah. the, the faces match up on both types. Excellent. And uh, the cost on the... Uh... A VCU is included in the kit. Oh, so yeah, we're not doing the thing where you buy a motor, then you buy an inverter and you buy a controller. We're doing a package. Yeah, yeah, we're doing a package. We're not we're not messing people around. It's the price includes the VCU, the inverter and the motor in one one package. So there's no hidden costs, which is the main thing with us. We don't want don't want people buying something and then suddenly realizing they need to spend another couple of thousand pounds for an inverter. It's just not not fair in that way. No, sure. And uh, obviously you're displaying these lovely uh, new motors as of today. Are there any, anything else in the uh, in the you know back office going on at the moment. There's always anything? stuff in the back office going on. Um, you might see us in America later this year, but we'll see what happens. Okay, cool. Nice, sounds great. But yeah, um, ZonicMotors.com is the website. There's all the data on there, and then they will be getting sold for the Zero V website long term. Well, yeah, thank you for showing us these, and uh, yeah, I hope you have a good show. Yeah, no problem at all. Thanks very much. And then we've also got our assistant behind camera. Oh, the assistant. Just here. Oh, she's she's oh she's run away. She's run away. Right, we, we are here at the electric classic car stand and uh, we've got Moggy. Hi Moggy. Hello Tim, how's it going mate? I am awesome. <laughs> and even more awesome because I get to see all your lovely, and Tim as well. Hi Tim. Hello. Uh, get to see the DeLorean, I mean, the, you know, Batman's uh, car here. It's, the Batman Oh, it's, it's a beaut. It's, I mean, the cars are even better in the flesh. I mean, the quality of restoration is amazing. But we were, we're going to come and have a look at this. The, the other end of the BMW scale. Indeed. <laughs> uh, yeah. The BMW Assetta bubble car. I, I seem to be getting a bit of a, a, a flavour for three wheelers at the moment. So yeah, this. It, what's here? You go. So oh, that's nice the uh, ah, charge yeah. socket. Look at that. There you go. We just borrowed it off the customer because um, obviously he's got this car and used it in London. Yeah. We thought, well, we've got a three pin uh, uh, socket here. We'll charge it up for him. So we've given him some free electrons while it's been at the show. Actually, not free because the, the electricity here is quite expensive to uh, put on the stand, but. So we just uh, charged up fully and it's all ready to go back to him tomorrow. 
Nah, it looks awesome. So th this is a BMW Assetta that we put a little motor in because obviously this is a chain driven motor. So right. what used to uh, be underneath here is a um, like a motorcycle motor, really, like two stroke. Right. Throwing out loads of smoke, no power whatsoever, real horrible, dirty uh, engine. Made lots of noise, but not much power. Right. And underneath there now, I can't take this cover off unfortunately, but underneath there is an AC20 motor. So it's a little motor like that, very compact. Yeah. And, um, I'm going in, I'm going in, Moggy. There you go. There he is. You see it? Yep. Now that gives lots more power, obviously, much more efficient. And because it's quite torquey, we've locked the gearbox into third. And because it's chain driven, right. we can't give it too much torque because the, the chain will probably uh, snap, quite frankly. So it we, already, uh, No, no, no. We, we stretched it a little bit. <laughs> we bedded it in. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But uh, yeah, it's fantastic now. So it's one gear. You just go, uh, you've got a knob in there that, to go uh, forwards. Put your foot down. The regen's kind of got that um, uh, one pedal uh, driving feel to it oh, as well. Wow. And then you've got uh, re uh, reverse the, the other way. So the, the one thing that makes me laugh, if you come around the front, yeah. obviously it's uh, the front door on it. So don't park too close to another no. car in front. But because um, it's got a bench seat, every time uh, you go around the corner, especially when we're up in Wales, you just, your bum just slides over like that. So you, you tend to kind of like sit in and steady yourself with one hand and then drive with the other. But uh, maybe a divider in the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or yeah. full-on rally harnesses. Yes. That probably would have been better. Yeah, I think going rallying in this uh, would be rather exciting, actually. I'll yeah. tell you one of the biggest challenges was um, trying to find space for the batteries. Oh, yeah, so, right, yeah. So we're... Underneath the, the seat. Ah, yes. So... The, uh, obligatory, uh, yeah. High-voltage uh, sticker. Yeah. yeah. So there's a 17 kilowatt hour battery pack underneath the seat, and it actually gives a really good range. So oh, you, can really? see, you can see we just filled it up. It's at 100%. There you go. Ready, ready to drop off to the customer tomorrow. And uh, what is the range on it, sorry? It's around about 80 miles to 100 miles, depending on how fast you go. And bear in mind, you don't want to go fast. I mean, what's the top speed in this? It's, is, is it, get, get, get out of and camera, look. There's, a, there's a, a red section there from 50 upwards, and that's the red zone of death. Because if you drive it any faster than that, you are really brave. Highway to the danger zone. Yeah, I mean, so you keep it in the red zone for fun, factor. No, if you're yeah. really brave. I was driving it. Uh, oh yeah, it's got a, the mild to wild uh, like scale. This is a get it bordering on the the wilds side of things, I'd say. But perfect car for the city. No, definitely. And I've actually got a friend who's got one of these, and uh, I'm sure the first question he's going to ask me, if I ask it right now, is what sort of cost we talking for a conversion like this? Oh, that's a good. I mean, we did this uh, a year or two back, so I would say it's. Probably in the order of about 20 grand, 25 grand maximum like that, I would have yeah. thought. Because it's, you know, a fairly small, like, um, uh, system, compact system. Yeah. And now we've done all the brain power to know where the batteries are going to go and stuff like that. We're kind of like ahead of the game now. We've kind of sussed it out. So we'll just be a copy paste of what we've done on this one. That looks awesome. And I love the fact that the wipers are very similar to my TDR Griffith, where they don't actually touch the windscreen. Yeah. It's beautiful. And uh, you had it around the Welsh roads as well, is it? Yeah, that was probably one of the scariest test drives I've ever done, really, because it was in winter and it was wet. And when we were doing the filming for the TV show, where uh, it's voltage, the camera crew that was in, in the vehicle in front we kept on going on the radio. Can you speed up, please? A little bit closer, a little bit closer. And I was flat out going downhill in the rain. The brakes ain't great uh, anyway. And uh, yeah, that, that was definitely getting my adrenaline going, that, that test drive. So um, I would recommend this car for the city, less so for doing rallies in uh, the Swiss Alps. Thank you very much for showing us uh, this beautiful example and uh, yeah, I'm uh, sure you'll have a great event. Thank you, Brilliant. Brody. Cheers, Tim. So we've just gone next door and we've uh, come across E-Dub Services and uh, I've come across uh, the guys here a few times before and they've got a wonderful camp van and this amazing golf. Um, and Kit, you are the man in charge of this uh, amazing operation. Um, I love your golf. Please tell me more about it. Yeah, you're not the only one who ah. loves our golf, which is quite fun. Yeah, when we first took on the project, it was kind of one of these, someone got in touch, they've seen that we'd done the campers, they've seen that we'd done Porsches, they kind of said, could you do my golf? We thought, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, um, yeah. So this particular model, um, we have a small rear Tesla drive unit that's tucked down underneath. In future versions, we will be using 
the Tesla Model 3 units just because the orientation works a lot nicer. Oh, really? Um, for the Golf? The for the Golf, yeah, we use Model 3. Something wow. that the, the, the re reduction gearbox is the opposite way around um, in a Model 3, um, so it just fits nicer inside a, a front engine vehicle. Yeah. Um, then in this one, we've got a 54 kilowatt hour um, battery pack, which is Calb batteries, and that's right. split 50 50. So we've got 12 modules in the front and 12 modules in the boot as well. Um, and so therefore the weight distribution, it's, oh, it's about 200 kilos heavier in total, yeah. but it's now a complete 50-50 split front to back. And what's the range um, of this uh, beauty? It's a real world range. We've got 200 miles, probably a bit more. We actually drove 200 miles and then still had some range left. Um, so yeah, and that was, we try and do real world range testing. We kind of stick it at 50 miles an hour, cruise up and down the motorway um, until we run out basically. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this one got to about 200. I think that's mostly because it's pretty efficient in how it distributes its power. Um, and it's obviously small and quite light. Um, so yeah, it works out really, really well. And I love the uh, neat little... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when we started this conversion, Chadamo was all the rage. Um, so yeah, and that actually works quite perfectly. We are actually doing CCS2 um, on all our modern conversions. So I don't know if it will quite fit behind the VW badge on the front or if it will fit in the old petrol flap. Um, but yeah, CCS2 will be the norm. Uh, from here on forwards of everything we do, including the golfs. Oh, cool. That looks good. And uh, let's have a little look inside. I did have a look inside earlier. Yeah. And I spotted, uh, is it a zero EV gear shift? Everything the zero there? EV. And the gear. <laughs> and yeah, then so you've got the uh, dials as well. Yeah, so speed hut gauges up there as well. So we've got, we've modeled that off the original dash. We have actually got high voltage heating in this one. So we've got a heater switch on there as well. So okay. um, it's not going to be as chilly as some other conversions. You're going to be able to get some high voltage heating, which is really nice and efficient yeah. into the existing Definitely vents too. Definitely needed that yesterday. Not so much today. <laughs> Today's so fine. Were, Today's all right. Very cold. What about the boot? So in the boot. How have you uh, distributed the batteries to keep the you know, nice okay. weight balance? Pretty straightforward. So the batteries underneath here are just in their own battery box, which is in a sunken. So we've kind of sunken the boot. Uh, between the chassis rails there and, and place the battery box in between um, and those are just joined together with high voltage cables between the two and we got our safety disconnect and then we just put a false a false boot on the top here to give it some actual storage which yeah, has worked quite nicely boot, and then we've got our we've got type 2 charging socket in the petrol tank petrol flap uh, okay. here yeah um, so just for home charging you just got that there too lovely job Thank you very much. For You're very welcome. Kit. And obviously the lovely VW camper in the background, which yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. if you go to your channel, you see a bit more detail on that. Right, we're uh, at the Kinghorn EV stand, EV conversion stand. I've bumped into George. Hi, George. Hi, Phil. How are you doing? Yeah, really well. And you're um, you're the owner of the company, is that right? Yep, that's right. Yeah. And how long have you actually been going for? Uh, for four years now. We've been in, doing conversions. So, yeah, awesome. We've and just... um, I was lucky enough to be shown some of your cars yesterday. Can you take me through um, what's going on in here? So we've got what looks like nearly a battery pack in the back. Yep. Uh, we've got a battery pack in the front. This what, is a Morris Minor Traveller that we have that we've done a commission where. We've taken a 2013 Nissan Leaf that I believe was crashed when we got it. Yeah. We've pulled out its battery pack, its motor, and stuck it in here. It's got the original Morris Minor drivetrain and gearbox in it that we were, that we use in a custom adapter place to fit to a the Leaf's motor yeah. that then runs it. Though because of that, we've had to drop the motor down to pretty much neuter it entirely to stop tear apart the, the drivetrain and gearbox. Right. There's no clutch and the gearbox it does work. Pretty much just whack it into gear and then take off with it. Yeah. The motor pack, we're only the drive, not drive pack, the gear, the, 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 the tongue not working. No, <laughs> I've been talking a lot today. Don't worry. The Don't battery worry. pack is only two thirds of the full battery pack we pulled off the leaf. Okay, so but, it's a leaf battery you're using. Yeah, we, we like to try and use the same parts that way they communicate themselves without yeah, having yeah, to sure. do any custom no, canvas work. And how many uh, kilowatt per hour battery will it have? 21 kilowatt. Okay. Though it's only using two thirds of the full battery pack due to weight issues. Okay. We've got half of it up front and half of it in the back. So is this the invert? No, that's the charge on the back there. Yep. So what sort of charge is that? Seven kilowatts? Seven or? kilowatt hour. We don't have the DC to DC converter on this one yet. Right. This one is pretty much in its like final stage before we start whacking stuff on and start running the cables. And inside have you got um, any kind of indicator of charge level? What we're going to do is we will be taking the dash plate and custom, using a custom software we have and some stuff to take the battery level and convert it into a system where the fuel gauge will show it's actual, as a actual battery level. Are you working with Peterson? 
for that? I don't know, to be honest. Because that, that's a good company. Um, I think uh, we do. I think we do get someone else to do it. Okay, cool. We'll be putting the fuel oh, using the original fuel cap as a charge port. Yep. And what charge is it going to be? Type two or type uh, granny cable? Granny cable. Yeah. Okay. This is the second battery pay, battery box. That's where the old fuel tank used to be. Yeah. We people have said to put it on the bottom, but we can't get enough clearance to stick it on the bottom. So we've had to stick it inside the boot and raise that up a little bit. Yeah. And um, I'm guessing range if using older Leaf batteries. I'm guessing it's around 50 miles. Is it? 100. 100. This car is so light that even with only half the battery, only two thirds of the battery pack, it can still get its full range. That's fantastic. That's really good. And I'll tell you what, the the quality of the um, the refurbishment of this car. Yeah. The paintwork, it looks, it looks beautiful. Yep. I mean, is this something that you do as it's well? It's not done by us internally, but we, we're friends with another company where we base that does this kind of restoration work. Ah, oh, that's awesome. The Nissan New Bird, oh, as uh, it's now called. Nissan's redubbed it the New Bird. The New Bird, yes. So we've got the battery pack in the back here. Yep. Aha, here we go. Kinghorn. So whereabouts are you guys based? Uh, we're based up in Durham in, in the northeast of England. We're, currently, we're outside of, outside of Durham City at Neville's Cross but we'll be moving to a industrial complex just down the road from our current location in the next month or so. Yeah. This was done on commission to us by Nissan factory themselves to celebrate the 30th anniversary for the Sunderland plant. So here we have the Nissan Leaf motor and inverter. Do you know what year the, uh, the motor is? Is it one of the early 2018. This, okay. When we got this car, it was put, the, the motor that we, the, all the internals were pulled from the from a car that had just come off the factory line from the new Sunderland plant. Oh, wow. That car was going to go to some happy owner, but no, it came to us to be brutally murdered. <laughs> oh, you're taking the heart and soul out of this car. Yeah, as I say, <laughs> this thing thinks it's, it's thinks it's just a normal Nissan Leaf with its granddad's clothing. Yes, I love that. I love the way you put that. That's fantastic. I've missed you, unfortunately. But um, can you tell me a bit about the business and you know uh, what's happening with you guys at the moment? Yeah, um, we started off with Morris Miners four years ago. I built myself a Morris Miner convertible and converted it to electric using leaf components. Yeah. So kind of the whole ethos of the business is more kind of British classics um, with kind of a mild performance instead yeah. of the kind of the real high performance stuff and really recycling Nissan leaves. So the whole idea was how do we take everything out of a leaf and put it into classic cars. Yeah. So, so that was the, the basis of the business four years ago and then it's kind of grown since then. So we, we still, just about everything we do is Nissan Leaf motor based, but then we do do different batteries. So uh, we're doing a Mercedes at the moment, which has got Tesla batteries in it. But the vast majority of in builds are as much of the uh, Leaf as we possibly can. So yeah, so Nissan Leaf recycling is what we do. So the other half of the business is we, we buy and sell Nissan Leafs as well, and we also break them. So we, we, we kind of have that, that whole recycling philosophy and using as much of a crushed Nissan Leaf as we can in the, in the builds. And, and getting them to work so no i, lo I love that because uh, as you might you may know from watching my channel but um i'm all about keeping it as green as possible yeah. um but you know from a performance point of view that's probably the only way that we differ i like something a little bit more uh, wild i suppose but well, i love you know the, the nissan that, that you guys did and uh, yeah i've seen your morrises over the, over the time as well but yeah. thank you very much for uh, yeah highlighting the uh, uh, the business and cool. hopefully we can uh, yeah get a bit more information from you guys in the near future yeah that'd be great cheers yeah. tim cheers, thanks for that